Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. Today we're back with the Lizardmen, gonna be taking on the Proud Empire, so let's get straight to the army compositions. As you can see here, I've got a generic Slon leading my army. This is in fact the High Slon. So we've got Apotheosis, Tempest, and Arcane Unforging. Just in case my opponent didn't bring a Flying Lord, I wanted that Arcane Unforging as well. Blood Statue of Despite is basically like, uh, similar to Rune of Wrath and Ruin, but without the speed debuff. Does a similar amount of damage and scales similarly. Uh, very good stuff. Has four charges. Shield the old ones in the double banishment, of course. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this guy. We've got a Skink Chief up in the air. And a source Scarvet on a uh, cold one here to give that bodyguard status. For an infantry core, we've got four source warriors with shields with a temple guard, uh, four skink cohort with javelins, and a couple of skink skirmishers, vanguard deployed in the woods there. We've also got some cold one spear riders hidden in the woods in the back. For my opponent's force, he's got Emperor Karl Franz up on Deathclaw here. Man, I haven't seen Deathclaw in some time. I forget how awesome looking he is compared to other griffins. But uh, anyway, Carl, of course, having the very heavy weapon strength. Massive charge bonus. Looks like he's got Reichland, Rune Fang, and Galmaraz with Stand Your Ground. Uh, let's see here. A Jade Wizard with uh, Earthblood and Regrowth. Yep. Looks like Royal Alt of Griffite supported by a Warrior Priest. All good stuff. Two units of Reichsguard. Front line of Spearmen with Shields. Uh, silver Bullets and another Spearman in the back, so very good stuff. This is a, uh, an Empire army that I would probably take <laughs> against the Lizardmen. It's uh, pretty well balanced, got some cap, got some guns. Uh, I probably wouldn't take Carl up in the air for the reason that he's about to find out. You can see my Slon is actually hidden in the woods here. He's gonna advance, and as Carl comes forward, he's gonna start to take some shots, and also we're gonna unleash the dreaded Overcast Tempest. So, this is one of the main reasons why you don't want to bring Flying Lords against the Lizardmen. Something like this can happen, and my opponent's gonna immediately have to start dumping his magic into Carl Franz to keep him alive. You can see he pops a regrowth there. And uh, he's also going to drop, or sorry, in Earthblood, he's also going to drop a regrowth in just a moment because Carl's taking a severe amount of damage between the uh, Tempest and the Skink Chief and these uh, skirmishers and everything. So, yeah, my opponent's definitely going to want to advance here. You can see he's going to try and push off those Skink skirmishers with the Spear and with Shields, which he probably should have done a little while ago, but still. Uh, Carl is going to get healed back up, and that didn't honestly take too much off the balance power, considering he does have the Jade Wizard, but, uh, of course, that is going to pull out a lot of the Winds of Magic from the Jade Wizard. You can see the Silver Bullets opening up shots, my Skink Chief discovering them the hard way, their stock mechanic making them uh, nigh un unspottable, but uh, anyway, the Empire Force is going to advance now on the, uh, the hill position that I've got here. Since I do have a bit of a ranged advantage, you can see the Empire Force is pushing up, but then the guns are actually just going to sit in range and start to shoot my Skink Skirmishers, which is not the worst idea in the world, but they probably want to save their ammo uh, for some more high-value targets, although that volley did quite a bit of damage there to those Skink Skirmishers. You can see these uh, Royal Alt of Fights pushing up through the woods. Unfortunately, they don't see this force of mine uh, until it's almost too late here. We pop that Blood Statue out of Spite, and then you can see the uh, Temple Guards and more pushing through, pushing them off. And, uh, yeah, they're going to be dropping back real quick. Granted, that Earthblood will counter a lot of the damage from that Blood Statuette. And then, of course, the Shield of Faith going down. That is going to affect Karl Franz uh, while he's in range of it. But once he drops out of range, that Tempest will start to do a bit more damage to him. Would have probably been better to stay in range with the Warrior Priest to actually give Karl that damage resistance to help mitigate some of the damage from the Tempest. But uh, you can see the Empire Forces pushing forward. Um... <laughs> I actually um, was not playing on my PC. I've been uh, staying at my brother's house, so I've been playing on his PC, but uh, yeah, I forgot that he has it set up default so that they're on skirmish, so the, the skin cohort actually skirmished back. Forgot to uh, take that off, but we did switch that off. Unfortunately, they did take a nasty charge there, but some Saurus are going to come, try and bog them down, and then the Spear Riders also coming in. The, these Spear Riders just sitting in reserve here, just in case Carl tries to do something like this, where he dives down onto the Slon. Slon will definitely take some damage, but of course, um, well, it looks like a bit of a traffic jam there, but... Uh, we're going to hook this uh, Scorus Scarvet to come in the back line. Unfortunately, overchasing pretty hard with those Temple Guard. Wherever the Demigriff Knights do land, though, they'll uh, have those Temple Guard to deal with eventually. Uh, that being said, Carl's still taking a lot of damage. We're going to drop that Apotheosis, though, as he is going after the Slon pretty hard at this point, which is, uh, I mean, obviously a great uh, great play there. You can see the Scorus Scarvet, unfortunately, got slightly uh, stuck on these Reichsguard here. 
which um, unfortunately he didn't get the attacks off needed to uh, clear the way there. But uh, yeah, at this point my opponent's doing a great job pulling away these Reichsguard here, trying to cycle charge around. A Banishment comes down though in this pocket and clears out a whole bunch of the Empire infantry. Of course we drop Shield of the Old Ones to protect my units from that Banishment. Also does some pretty good damage to the Royal Alt of Griffites there. But uh, Empire infantry definitely going to lose out here and over on this side, uh, the uh, Zindler's Reichsguard and the southern unit of Reichsguard did get kind of dragged down there by the rear charge of the Cold One Spear Riders. Uh, granted, the Saurus took a ton of damage there as well, so it's a bit of an attritious trade, but another Overcast Tempest going down on Karl Franz. Since he was just sitting up in the, here in the air, not trying to dive my Slon or anything, I figured let's uh, drop another Tempest on him, and at this point he's going to get very, very low, and that is going to affect the balance of power pretty severely. Granted, it's not too far out of favor, but the Temple Guard are going to get in here, start dragging down some of these uh, Reichsguard and so on. It's going to be a tough time overall. Even this Warrior Priest here and the Royal Alta Cryptites, there's just too many models for them to deal with. Cold One Spear Riders, the uh, Temple Guard, and more just kind of dragging them down through sheer numbers. The Spearmen are, are on station supporting, um, but they're not going to do a whole lot against the Temple Guard, obviously. They'll do okay against the Spear Riders, but uh, yeah, you can see the Alt of Griffites getting dragged down there. One more regrowth going off on Karl Franz, trying to bring this balance power back into uh, you know a reasonable reasonable balance, but uh, unfortunately these Reichsguard that came back from routing, they are going to be able to do some damage on these Saurus, but... Uh, yeah, I don't think it'll be enough to cause any major leadership issues. Uh, with the Warrior Priest being isolated here, we're probably going to go after him with these Cold One Spear Riders. And uh, yeah, it's probably just going to take maybe one overcast Tempest or so to finish off Karl Franz's leadership. And at that point, should be pretty much game over uh, for the Empire. You can see a rear charge from that uh, Source Scarvet sending those Spearmen into route. And uh, yeah, the Skink Skirmishers have managed to stay online this whole time. The guns are counter-firing at them, but again... Uh, these two skink skirmishers by themselves are less expensive, you know, uh, sorry, rather the two skink skirmishers combined are less expensive than the silver bullets, so I don't mind taking this trade all day, especially if it's going to keep the silver bullets from doing anything else. That being said, Sora Scarvet, I'm going to pop an apotheosis on him, but he kind of caught, caught out at the wrong moment. Karl Franz also has Galmaraz up, so he's just going to punch the crap out of this Sora Scarvet, which is a bit unfortunate. We'll start to turn the balance power back a little bit there. Um, but at this point, things are pretty far out of reach for the Empire. You can see a lot of units over on this side shattering. Still got some relatively healthy Cold One Spear Riders and Temple Guard, of course. Still uh, still pretty strong as well. So, yeah, it's going to be rough stuff for the Empire at this point. Uh, it's definitely a fun matchup, but unfortunately Karl Franz was in range for an Overcast Tempest. So as soon as he took off there, I had that ready on station. And uh, we are going to drop that on him to deal some additional damage and try and finish off the leadership of the Empire. We've also got one more pocket banishment that we're going to use to try and take out these Silver Bullets in just a moment here. The Warrior Priest did manage to uh, escape those Cold One Spear Riders, but now being dragged down by the Temple Guards. So we'll catch some cinematic action of them doing that as this banishment just rips apart those Silver Bullets. And then the Skink uh, Cohort are going to follow up immediately and uh, try and route off these uh, Regiment of Renown handgunners here. Beautiful stuff. Man, Warhammer is such an awesome looking game. I really can never get over how great it looks. Props to the artists, of course, both at uh, Games Workshop and at Creative Assembly for bringing the game to life. It's been absolutely amazing, and what a battle. Fun stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Uh, yeah, the High Slon, you know, it's not a super common pick, so people often don't think about it, but it's risky, very, very risky to take Flying Lords against the Lizardmen, and this is the reason why, because the High Slon can really punish you for doing so, especially someone as expensive as Karl Franz up on Deathclaw is with all his items. We can check that in just a moment here, but um, yeah, in overall terms, uh, the Saurus did quite well. Obviously, they're mostly just fighting Spearmen in the front line, but despite repeated cycle charges from the Reichsguard, who themselves did quite well. Um, you know, the Source Warriors were able to kind of hang in there. Temple Guards also, you know, they did okay. Uh, the the Slon, 31 kills from the Banishments, and also, of course, helping to take down Karl Franz with the repeated Tempests. Uh, the Cold One Speed Riders definitely like these guys as kind of a counter cavalry. You sort of hold them in reserve, and then once your opponent commits their cavalry, then you counter charge with them, and, or else, you know, you rear charge the cavalry, try and pin them in against your, your Saurus or your other units there, so... Definitely like them in that role. They're not a great pure cavalry unit, but they're definitely a good kind of a counter cav in that aspect. Um, for my opponent, yeah, the Reichsguard did fairly well. Royal Alt of Griffites, unfortunately, just didn't find a good home. If they had tried to push around that flank and go after that Slon pretty aggressively, um, you know, that may have been good, but that's originally why I had the Temple Guard in that 
a starting position to begin with, but if they had been able to, say, pull the Temple Guard out of position and then maybe come back around and then get on the Slon, you know, just a thought. Um, but yeah, the Slon definitely needed to be focused down, I think, a little bit more aggressively, maybe using the Silver Bullets and more. One thing I do like about Shield of the Old Ones as well is if your Slon's getting focused by, like, say, a Luminarch or Silver Bullets or... Uh, even the Hammer of the Witches, that Shield of the Old Ones, of course, mitigates magic damage, all of which apply to the units I just listed from the Empire. So, um, yeah, for my opponent, I'd probably put Karl Franz down on the ground just to make him a bit cheaper. Um, and then you could maybe cut the Warrior Priest and go with a Witch Hunter instead, because the Witch Hunter, you know, he's a single model that has that armor piercing missile, so he can kind of run around, kite a little bit. He has the uh, Accusation, which is good even against multi-model units, especially like something like the Cold One Spear Riders. Could do some pretty good damage there. Um, so just for comparison's sake, you see Karl Franz on the horse is only 1600, whereas on Deathclaw is 2200. That's just with his base abilities. I would maybe keep hold the line if you have the extra funds, but yeah, 2580 probably for that guy that my opponent brought him in, versus I'd probably bring him only 2030, so... Yeah, big difference there. Running with the Royal Altar Crypts, uh, Lore of Life, definitely a good choice when you're bringing Karl Franz, especially. Um, and then something like this, where you bring the Witch Hunter, you can cut that slippery. Just keep the accusation. And then the Infantry Corps is pretty decent, although one or two great swords actually I find are pretty solid in this matchup, so I might grab a couple of them. Uh, the Reichsguard, definitely agree with that pick, so we're already getting just about there, so yeah, see the money I've saved with putting Karl Franz on the ground and then, you know, retooling a few different things here and there, able to grab a couple great swords here, and they'll definitely trade well against Saurus, because the Saurus, I mean, that's going to be one of the big threats you face. Reichsguard are kind of there to help deal with the Saurus as well, but you really, I think, want something more than just Spearmen on the ground. Um, I mean, the Spearmen are definitely great, but the one risk with this particular build is it doesn't have any ranged fire besides the Witch Hunter, which could potentially be risky if you face a very, uh, you know, kind of kitey skink build. But you do have the cavalry to try and ride them down, and Lizardmen, you know, they'll have a tough time trying to protect if they really go aggressive on the skirmishing. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, though. What uh, what builds do you like for the Empire against Lizardmen? I thought my opponent's build was pretty solid there. I would just fine-tune a few things, try and upgrade a few of the infantry to be something a little more punchy. But that's just me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.